Here in example two, we're going to encounter an integrand that does contain an odd power of cosine. So if we look back at the guidelines on the previous page, we notice here in guideline number two that if the power of cosine is odd and positive, we would want to save a cosine factor and convert everything else over to sines. So for this particular problem, if we want to leave a cosine factor from a cosine cube, then clearly the thing to do would be to spread it apart as a cosine squared times a cosine. Now another thing that we're going to have to be mindful of throughout this problem is that it is indeed a definite integral with the boundaries pi over 3 and pi over 6. So we don't want to lose track of that, especially towards the end of the problem. So in addition to changing the cosine cubed, as I indicated, to cosine squared times cosine, I'm also going to pop that square root of sine up from the denominator into the numerator and give it a negative exponent. And of course, that would be the negative 1 half exponent in this case. And as with practically any cosine squared or sine squared that we see in an integrand of this variety, we're then going to rely upon the uh, trigonometric identity for the Pythagorean identity for, for cosine squared, which in this case is going to be 1 minus sine squared. So we'll just rewrite this whole integrand, replacing that cosine squared. And then our next task is going to be to work on this portion of the integrand and clean it up a little bit by way of just a simple multiplication. And we will use the distributive property in doing this. And what that's going to do is give us a, a single concise integrand that would contain uh, a trigonometric words of sine, which would then make a great candidate for our u substitution since we have the derivative of that u, namely the cosine, sitting out after the integrand. So on, upon that distribution here, we would then be looking at 1 times sine of x to the negative half, which is of course sine of x to the negative half. And you just got to be a little bit careful about this multiplication here. You will add the exponents together since this is a multiplication of like bases. 2 plus negative half would be positive 3 halves. And I'll just elect to write that exponent out around the entire sine functions. It's very important that you have the parentheses around the entire sine function so as the observer doesn't misinterpret the x as being raised to the power. And of course we are still dealing with this cosine of x at the end of the integrand, which is a great thing because our u substitution can now take hold. It, it really is not required that I rewrite this into two separate integrals where I would distribute the cosine through both and then split them, a piece, split them apart into two separate pieces. I think it's pretty clear from here that we could go ahead and perform the u substitution sine of x and the derivative of course produces cosine of x dx perfect match exactly what we were hoping for our du matches and so in essence what we're doing here is we are integrating u to the negative half minus u to the positive three halves all with respect to u now you'll notice that I held off on copying the boundaries of integration because what I think is best to do now is to change those boundaries which were originally x's if you go back to the original problem the boundaries will always match the variable with which you're integrating with respect to and in this particular instance we are now wanting to integrate with respect to u so we just need to change a pi over 3 and a pi over 6 into a u and of course the way to do that is with our u substitution. So I'll tell you what, I'll just 
go over here off to the side and write our statements. U would be the sine of pi over 3. And U would also be the sine of pi over 6. And a lot of students have those readily memorized, and that's an excellent skill. If you don't have those memorized, it doesn't take very much time or effort to recreate the fact that you have a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle in this 30, 60, 90 triangle. You just got to keep in mind that 30 degrees is indeed the pi over 6, 60 would be the pi over 3, and the sine of the pi over 3 angle would be opposite, which would be radical 3 over hypotenuse. The sine of the 30 degree angle would be opposite 1 over hypotenuse 2. So to recap, the sine of 60 degrees is radical 3 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. Now what I'm going to do is start up here in, in the right space uh, of the problem and go ahead and integrate u to the negative 1 half, which gives me u to the positive half all over 1 half or multiplied by 2. And then I will subtract u to the 3 halves integrates to give us u to the 5 halves. I would add 1 to 3 halves. Typically, I would divide that by 5 halves or multiply by the reciprocal, 2 fifths. And then, of course, my boundaries would come next. Now, looking ahead to this problem, I find that the, the solution is quite ugly. It doesn't simplify very nicely, and it's really not worth our efforts, I think, to simplify it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, at what we are dealing with here. If we plug in radical 3 over 2, we'll replace the u's with that quantity. And you can see already we've got something that's not real pleasant. Radical 3 over 2 raised to the 1 half. In essence, we're actually taking the, the square root of something that's already uh, under a radical. And then over here, we've got something quite similar. Radical 3 over 2 raised to the 5 halves. And then I'll subtract 2 times, now I put in my 1 half for my u in both of those situations. Almost ran out of room there. Hopefully you can read that okay. I've got negative two-fifths times one-half raised to the five-halves up there. And for all intents and purposes, that's where we're going to stop with this problem. Um, if you were so motivated as to approximate this uh, using your calculator, you'd get something along the lines of a 0.239, I believe. But that gives you a pretty good background with a, a situation where the cosine is raised to an odd power. Uh, despite the fact that we had a definite integral, indefinite integral, the integration is still going to be performed the same way regardless.